How's everybody doing today at the Life Church? Won't you all stand to your feet and get ready to worship this morning?
From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so.
you. And we thank you, Jesus. All together, we sing this. And all my life you have been faithful. Yes. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes. And all my life. celebrate God's goodness and God's faithfulness. And I think the biggest thing that I want to highlight right now is God's good is different than our good. So in our mind, we think good is a promotion, a new car, something else that's a blessing. God can't move in those areas until he's worked out other areas. So as we're holding on to burdens and struggles or health challenges or business setbacks, I want you guys to think that there is something good in it because God's not done. If it's not good, he's not done. And just keep settling in that every day. His good is different. If you wanted to go ahead and partake with communion, that's the first way that we can give God honor and worship today. And we have four stations. There's two in the back, and there's two on this lower area. It's a signification of God's brokenness through Jesus Christ and what he did to bring us into right standing with him. Each time that we do that as a believer, we're reconciling ourselves. We're laying down anything that we're holding on to, and we're saying, God, come into me fresh. He says, take this in remembrance of me. And every time that we do that, we're entering back into that race that he has available for us. The second way is by prayer. So we're going to have leaders down on both sides of the stage, and we encourage you to come down and believe for the impossible. Ask them to pray over anything. I just was prayed over this morning for something that's happening tomorrow, and it's huge. And I'm just thankful that that opportunity is there. So these people are ready to partner with us and believe. And we want you guys to line up all the way back. We all know there's something that we need to stand with and faith for, and we are there. Um, we also have the altar down here. When we're thinking of postures of our hearts and our bodies, we want to surrender everything. Part of that is kneeling before our King Jesus and laying everything at his feet. When we do this, it's a powerful representation of what's happening in our hearts. And we invite you to do that today. Come lay it all down. Come get prayer. Take in remembrance. These are all ways that you can worship our God and our Savior. And let's pray over that right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus. We thank you that the Easter season is every day in our hearts as we remember the gift of salvation. We thank you today that we're here as a body of believers, as a first-time guests are welcome. We just thank you for what you're doing in our hearts and in our minds and our families, and we surrender it all today. Lord, move in this place. We thank you and praise you, and it's in your holy name we pray. Amen. Let's respond, church. You know, change happens when we call upon the name of Jesus. I just want to encourage you that what you are thinking and praying on that you call his name on him. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. 
Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I am speaking Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadow. from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the holy name Jesus come on let's sing this today shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus, it's your name. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Your name Jesus for my family, I speak the whole 
before Jesus died for us, he went to visit his friend Lazarus, who had been dead for four days. And when he spoke, Lazarus came out. He was resurrected, and it was preparing everybody for his own resurrection. And I want you guys to remember that there's power in the name of Jesus. As believers, we have that power on the inside of us, and nothing can stop us if we tap into that alignment. So press in, speak Jesus for what you're believing for, and just continue to give him glory each and every day. You guys can go ahead and have a seat. My name is Cassie Leal, and on behalf of the Life Church leadership team, I wanted to welcome you guys to service today. We do have a special moment carved out for our first time guests. If this is your first time, you picked a great day to be here. We have water baptism later, and we have just an amazing day planned for you. If you guys can let us know about your first time, we'd love to get a gift in your hands. So there is a connection card that you're probably sitting on, and it has a little indication right down halfway through that just says it's your first time here. If you fill out this card, go ahead and bring it to our info table, and we'll give you that gift as a way to say thank you. And then we're going to go ahead and jump right into what we have prepared for today. So go ahead and take a look at this video for what's happening at the Life Church. Welcome to the Life Church. We're so glad you're here with us today. Each weekend, we have services at multiple locations around Memphis, New York, Massachusetts, DC Metro, Santiago, Chile, Florence, Italy, and online, where you can be a part of worship, hear an encouraging message, and experience an environment that is welcoming and friendly. We would love for you to be a part of all that God is doing in and through our church. The best way to get started is by taking your next step. Whether it's learning more about the Life Church through our discovery experience or building relationships by joining a life group, there's a next step for you. Are you looking for a place for your family to get involved in church? Check out our next gen areas, Kids Life and Axis. Kids Life is our experience for children six weeks through fifth grade and has age specific classes during our weekend services. Axis is our ministry for students 6th through 12th grade that meets on Wednesday nights for dynamic services with worship and teaching from God's Word. Find out more ways to get connected and what's coming up at church by following us on Instagram at thelifechurchma or by visiting thelifechurch.com. What's up, everybody? All right, we're going to keep the lights off. Okay. What? Oh, my fault. Never mind. Yo, the transitions today were... Yo, what happened? Hold on. We got a video. Hold on. Let's pause. Act like this didn't happen, okay? Roll it! That was bad. All right, check this out. General has issued a new advisory on a growing youth mental health crisis. The U.S. Surgeon General has issued a new advisory on a growing youth mental health crisis. So much going on with teens right now. Honestly, I think it's just harder to grow up now. If you think about social media, honestly, I think it's just harder to grow up now. Honestly, I think it's. And I'm supposed to come in like, woo, yeah. There we go. Hey, Axis kids, you ready for the conference this year? All right, all right, we almost there, yeah. Um, yeah, so Axis Conference, man, we were able to take a handful of people last year, um, students that is, and man, it just set something on fire in these kids. My daughter was able to go there last year, and she is super excited to go again this year. So if you can, if you know any students, 6th through 12th grade, we would love for you to consider having them go to Axis Conference. 
And also, I'm going to plug this. is um, We have a scholarship going right now. So if anybody wants to help and sow into that, if you go to the giving page, you'll see a, a drop box that will say Access Conference Students Scholarship. So you can go ahead and sow into that, and it will help us to help students who don't have a lot of funds to get them there. Isn't that cool? So that's what we want to do. Um, how y'all doing today? I can't really see anybody. It's still dark in here. Um, anyhow, hi, Peter. Man, who's excited to be in the house of God this morning? We got a fun day. We got baptism, huh, Donald? Let's go. Come on. I just want to say this, too. Uh, even though you may not have registered today, it's still open for you. Like, man, we got T-shirts. I think we got shorts and slippers and all this other stuff. A towel. Man, I, I'm going to push somebody today. Let's just go ahead and do it. You've been on the, you've been on the line, and today we're just going to do it. Okay? So it's like, oh, okay. But, um, yeah, that's it. Um, so listen, how many people were here for Easter? Anybody? How was Easter weekend? I'm still recouping. I'm still, I'm still trying to get my energy back from that weekend. That was fun. But um, did you guys know, I want to share some stats with you. We had 978 people show up over the weekend to the Life Church Mass. And what I love about it, too, is that 71 people began a fresh start with Jesus on that weekend. Yeah, that's something to celebrate. I believe that's why the church is here. That's what we're designed to do. We're supposed to reach people like Jesus. He came to seek and save that which was lost. And that's why I believe the church exists to welcome people and share the good news of Jesus. Amen. Come on. That's it. That's it. If we make it any more, just come in here and let's glorify the name of Jesus. Amen. That's what I love to do. That's all. You're going to hear me say Jesus about a million times today just because the, Jesus is amazing. And that's what this is all, all about. So we're in a new series, and it's, it's titled, um, I always get this wrong, Not Gonna Lie, right here. So if you guys have the Easter survey card, we're going to have these for the next five weeks. On, if You guys can still help us with this, because on the back side, you can fill out to show us what you guys want to learn more about. So right now, due to the information that we have, we have four things as of right now. We have today, um, the number one was sharing my faith. So I'm going to speak about sharing my faith. Number two was end times. Number two is end times. So I gave Marcos Miranda the assignment to talk about the end times. Yeah, that definitely wasn't going to be me. Definitely don't know much about that. Just like Jesus, one day you're going to come back and I'm going to be with you. That's all I know. <laughs> That's all I really care to know. Jesus, I'm going with you. You know, free trip, post trip, this trip, that trip. I don't know. I just know I'm going to be with Jesus. <laughs> That's it. So take me when you're ready, Lord. Anyhow, um, that's exciting. Uh, and then it's uh, the Holy Spirit, and then it's prayer. So those are the four we have right now, but this is five weeks. So if you guys could go ahead and fill that out for me, we'll be able to get more information and prepare that fifth message for us. Amen? So go ahead and do that. Um, today, I'm going to be, like I said, speaking on sharing our faith, sharing my faith. How many in here believe it's important to share the good news of Jesus? Yeah. Amen? Yeah, it's really, it's really cool. It's like... I think sometimes as believers, we could get intimidated, intimidated to share it because we think it's more complicated than it really is. Like, it's really, if you just boiled it down, it's like, hey, man, I got some good news for you. Uh, you were bad and still are bad, but there was a guy named Jesus who was good and is really good. And, like, he came and gave his life for you so you could be connected to God. Isn't that cool? Like, that's what it is. And, like, so there's this thing called, like, eternity. Like, so, like, here's um, our life right here. And then look at this whole room. Like, that's eternity. But we focus so much on this water bottle that we forget about all this. But here's the thing. Like, so we're going to spend eternity in all this, and you could have eternity with Jesus and with God if you just believe in Jesus and what he did for you. That's good news. And that's the message. Isn't that cool? Like, somebody in here today is, didn't hear that, and they didn't know that. They came to church, and they heard about marriage. They heard about prayer. They heard about worship. They heard about... but. Sometimes we don't even talk about Jesus. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hold on a second. I get all that. Like, all that other stuff is good. Don't get me wrong. It's all good. But you, how many know you could go to heaven with a broken marriage? But we can't go to heaven without Jesus. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like, you could go to heaven knowing about prayer and worship and marriage and all that. But you can't go to heaven without Jesus. So we got to talk about Jesus. 
I want a healthy marriage for you, but more importantly, I want you to know Jesus. <laughs> Amen? And then I believe because you give your heart and life to Jesus, then it works on your marriage. It works on you. It works on your friendships. It works on, it, it, it's just, it is what it is. That's how it works. You know, and um, yeah, um, let me get to my message. Sorry. All right, but nonetheless, so there's this thing called Barna. They do uh, a lot of surveys and studies, right? So I, I did some research getting into this message. In October 2022, Barna surveyed over 2,000 adults, and it says three out of four say they want to grow spiritually. Additionally, the same proportion, 77, say they believe in a higher power. Nearly half of the 2,000 say they are more open to God today than before the pandemic. So I just look at that, and I'm like, that helps me build confidence because what I believe is that people want to know about Jesus more than you think they want to know about Jesus. So although you're intimidated, and I was talking to a friend out back, and he's like, I just need more confidence. Well, here, I'm going to share that with you. Just know that people want to hear what you got to say. I think we got to twist the trigger in our mind and say, no, they're not going to reject me all the time. Some may, but it's worth it. It's worth the rejection for you to share the lifeline of heaven. Isn't that cool? So it's worth it. And, and, and the study shows that more people actually want to hear about God than they don't. So th you got to carry that with you, okay? So, and then I love this. Study on teenagers from 26 countries. It's the biggest survey that Barna has done in 38 years. And they surveyed nearly 25,000 kids from between the ages of 13 and 17. And what they came to find out, and they titled this study, The Open Generation. Because three, quarter, three quarters of the U.S. kids in Gen Z want to know more about Jesus. Three quarters. Three out of four people want to know more about Jesus in these, in these kids right here. So ask this thing, when we got to meet about this, because I need to know and we need to get into how do we reach these kids. Because a lot of times, these kids ain't going to come to the church. They really ain't. But we got to go get them. Yeah. We got to go get them. We got to go to the sporting events. We got to get out there into the schools. We got to have our kids invite because what I know throughout the research is that kids want to know more about Jesus. We can't drop the ball on this. Like, it's right there for us. These kids are begging. I need Jesus. I want to learn more. But then we got Christians who are scared to tell it. We got to get out there and we got to share this good stuff. Now, sharing our faith, I want to get behind, I want to do the why behind the what. Right? A lot of times we do a lot of things, but it's like, why are you doing that? So when it comes to our faith, I want to share why we do what we do. And is it our job anyways as Christians, or is it Paul's job? Or when I get the mic, then I'll be able to share the good news. You, you guys laugh, but you know how many people chase this thing? No, I'm serious. You know how many people chase this and they think, when I get this, I'll be effective for the Lord? What I've come to realize is my effectiveness is more on the ground than it is up here on this mic. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, it's, it's, we got to shape it. We, we uh, Christians want to chase this. My young people, they want the mic to get value. It's more of an insecurity in yourself that when I get that, I'll feel like I'm doing for the Lord. No, you could do for the Lord in your community. You could do for the Lord in your workplace and share the good news of Jesus. You don't need this. You don't need this. It's good to have this because when we get to the church, we can share the good news. But there's a lot that we could do on the ground. Does that make sense? Amen. Amen. So I made a list. It was a huge list of why we need to share our faith in a huge list of what it matters to God. What matters to God? All right, here's the list. <laughs> yeah, huge list. Can y'all read that? I see some squinting going on. I'm going to read it for you. I never want to forget what matters to God, so I made a list. People. People, 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 times 100. We do what we do for people. Why do we pray for people? Why do we want deliverance for people? Why do we want restoration for people? Why do we want healing for people? Why did God send his son for people? Why do we do with this, what we do for people? But sometimes the church comes in and we forget about the people. <laughs> we come in and we want to do this and we want to do that. And then we're like, oh, oh, yeah, there's people that we need to do. Like, hold on. This whole thing is about people. The mics, the lights, the TV screens, the music, the af access conferences, the access on Wednesdays. It's all about people. And you know what's so cool? I was talking about sharing your faith, and I had a woman just at the service. She said, I was sharing my faith with this woman right here, and she came today for the first time and brought her two kids. 
and she wants to get connected. And now the two kids are like, I want to get connected too. Two kids. And they want to get connected because one woman was not scared to say, hey, what about church? What about Jesus? Now they're here. Now they're connected. So cool. It's just so cool. So nonetheless, it's about people. So here we go. I share my faith because people matter. So somebody say that with me. People matter. God desperately loves people, and he is hoping that us in this room, if you're Christian, that we would do something about it in reaching his people. Amen? So I had this time, um, I, I went to Florida on vacation with my family, and we went to this park. I think it was Aquatica or something like that. It was a water park, and I love the lazy river. It's my favorite thing now. Before, when I was younger, I used to love the Superman and all that, but now I'm just like this, sunglasses on, and I'm chilling with my life. Yo, I'm just going down the lazy river trying to intentionally go under those little waterfalls, flipping out like a little kid. Anybody know about the Lazy River? Yeah. How many would love if you could put that in your backyard? Man, I had a vision. I'm like, yo, imagine God, help get one of those in my backyard. <laughs> so if anybody wants to sew into that, I'll take it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Stop it. You guys, stop. Somebody got real mad at that. I'm joking. Okay, so nonetheless, we're going down the Lazy River, and I'm with my family. I got three kids and my wife. And I, my youngest, she was like three or four at the time. So we're all chilling, and the sun's beaming. We're going down. And, and, and all of a sudden, it comes like to this split. This rock like split us. And all of a sudden, the current started just taking us. So me, my wife, and my two older kids went one way, and my youngest, who was like three, went the other way. I was shook. My little girl was screaming and crying. Mommy, daddy, didn't, she didn't know what happened. And then I'm yelling, we're coming. We're coming. I'm getting out of the thing, and I'm trying to run. I'm pushing people out the way. I'm like, get out of my way. And then finally, it, it reconnects again. And it's like, there was people that got me really frustrated, and then there was people that made me happy. There was people that just did not care about my three-year-old. They're just like splashing and they're having a good old time and they don't care. They're all up in their world worrying about themselves. And then I got another group of people that like, help this man. And they're going to grab her and they don't even know her. And they're like, here. Man, so my, what I want to say is sometimes I feel like we do that as Christians. God is seeking his children. He's saying, I need my kids. They're lost. And then we got people out here like one of the groups that just don't care. We're just going about our business, splashing and doing life. I want a bigger crib. I want my Benz. I want this. I want that. But then we got another group who's eagerly plugged into the church saying, what do we got to do to reach people? How do I improve myself and gain influence? How do I love people better? And I believe God sometimes can get frustrated with our prayer life because a lot of our prayers are about us. My question is that when you pray, does your prayers change the world or does it just, does it just change your circumstances? Does that make sense? If God is all about people, we got to be all about people. Amen? Amen? All right. I'm stretching some hearts in this place, but it's okay. And I wanted to share another story with that whole lost thing. Uh, I'm watching my friend's puppy right now. It's like this little thing. <laughs> and this thing got lost the other day, too. So I was like, I want to share that one, but I got that one, but I don't got a lot of time. But nonetheless, this puppy went missing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my goodness. And, and, and come to find out, after sh going throughout the whole house, it was under an uh, end table, just in the hole down there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But me and my wife were, like, going in and out of every room. Where is this thing? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Anyhow, had enough fun for today, huh? Um, but so, so lost people matter to God. They're not, they're not dogs. They're not heathens. They're not, look at them. Ew. Stay away. <laughs> Y'all know them kind of church people? It, 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 we must reach. It's our job. We're ambassadors. We're representatives for Jesus. The Bible says we are ambassadors of the anointed one who carry the message of Christ to the world. As though God were tenderly pleading with them through your lips. Isn't that powerful? God is saying, I want to use my spirit to speak through you to share my love from heaven for them. Would you open your lips for somebody I want to share my love, well, I, but and we're the plan. We are the representatives to bring this good news. So we tenderly plead with you on Christ's behalf, turn back to God and be reconciled to him. Then the Bible says, all this is what God has done for us because of what Christ has done. God has brought us back to himself as his friends 
I love that. Do you see yourself as a friend of God? I want you to start seeing yourself as a friend of God if you have given your life to Jesus. That is the job that he has given to us. Somebody say, that's me. God's message is this. By Christ's death, God was bringing people of the world back to himself. As his friends, he would no longer keep their sins in his thoughts. That's freeing to me because I got a long list of sins in my backpack. This is the message that God wants us to tell people. Isn't that a great message? That's a great message, Josue. It's very simplistic. It's God loves you, man. And he wants to be in relationship with you again. And he sent his son to do it. You just got to receive it. If we want to be more like Jesus, our life mission must include what his life mission was. Amen? Amen. There was a bunch of scriptures that I wrote in here. As you uh, sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, which is going to happen today. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel, the good news of Jesus, right, to all creation. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in authority of uh, his name to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sins to all who repent. And Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I'm sending you, right? So we get the message. We, we got to go. We got to share. Sharing the good news is my responsibility. Here's the next point, right? The Bible says, it's not my work of telling the good news that gives me any reason to boast. That is my duty. Something I must do. If I don't tell people the good news, I am in real trouble, the Bible says. That's powerful to me. That's how much this is serious. Like God needs us to tell the good news of himself. It, it, it's the truth. It's the really, really truth. So I really want us to, my goal is that we would gain a confidence leaving here. That we don't got to be afraid to share this good news. And you don't got to make it more complicated than it really has to be. You don't need to know how, like, it's good to know all this stuff. How many books, what's, name them in order, Genesis, Exodus, like, it, I get it. But the most important thing that you can know is that God loves people and we need to tell the message of Jesus to those people. Amen. Amen. So it's a, it, it's a privilege. The Bible says all these things, new things, are from God who brought us back to himself again, so good, through what Jesus Christ did. This is the message. And God has given us the privilege of urging everyone to come into his favor and be reconciled to him. That's the message, y'all. For God was in Christ restoring the world to himself, no longer counting men's uh, sins against them, but blotting them out. This is the wonderful message he has given us to tell others, okay? So number, here's another point. I'm grateful for what Jesus has done for me. Anybody? Yes. Anybody grateful? <laughs> I know I am. I wake up every day just grateful. Just grateful for what Jesus has done. For the love of Christ puts us into action, the Bible says. Into action. Into action. Into action. That means we must move. We got to do something. Y'all get it? And I'm in here because I know the impact when believers come together to be on a mission for the world. I'm serious. It, like when we get up here and say, get plugged into the church, it's not just for this political thing, y'all. It's because the church is the hope of the world. <laughs> Do y'all get me? Like, no, I got to say this because this is the complaints I hear. You guys are eh, political. Political about what? Political about reaching the world for Jesus? And we want you to bring your gifts because I know there's a uniqueness in you that God has designed that's going to help us on this team to reach people. That's why we want you. That's why we need you. Because you have a part to play in the body because are you a believer? Who's a believer in here? You're a part of the body. Congratulations. Now tell me this. If I cut off my arm, this one and this one, can I hold this mic? No. There's a problem when you're not connected to the body. So we need you to get connected to the body. Don't get frustrated because there's a passionate white boy up here in a leather thing challenging you to get connected. It's because I'm passionate about what we need to do for the people, for the lost world. This should be the greatest desire in our hearts and in our lives is to do the work of God to reach the broken people. <laughs> Amen? So don't leave here saying they just want my money. They just want me to use me. No. No. No, we, we want you because Jesus has placed something special in you that we don't have here yet. 
the passions for maybe kids or the passions for restoring marriages or, or single mothers or they're homeless. Like some of those things I care about, but I, my heart's not burning there. But there's something that's burning within you that you say, I need to use this to build this house. And that's why we need you. All right, I just had to get that off my chest because that's what's in the church sometimes. There's this mentality that they're just using me. No, you got it twisted. We, no, it's about Jesus. Our hearts, if you trust your leaders here, Pastor Emmy and myself and the other leaders, like, we love Jesus. We just want to share Jesus. Amen? And see, people come to a saving knowledge of Jesus. All right, okay, whew. People are hopeless without Christ. Like I said, like I said, it's important that we share because people are hopeless without Jesus. Anybody been without Jesus? Anybody now been with Jesus? <laughs> Being with Jesus is much better. I promise you that. I'm telling you. My, my wife was laying in bed this morning. She's like, yo, remember when we, ne when we used to never go to church? I said, those were the bad, bad days. Those were bad days as I'm getting ready to go to church. I'm like, that wasn't good. There was a lot of things happening when we weren't in the church. But thank God for being connected to the body, hearing encouragement, get, rubbing shoulders with the body. Because now I, I, I'm learning about marriage and how to represent Jesus. I'm learning how to purge out evil desires. I'm learning how to build my character and lean into love. And that happens in the church. You ain't going to find that in the world. Come in here and watch God build you and, and sanctify you. That happens in the church. You ain't going to find that at the bar or out in your workplace. You come to the church and you let God move through you and you'll be sanctified. There's sanctification in the house of God. Amen? All right. So the Bible says, salvation is found in no one else. Right? Y'all know this. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind but which we must be saved. It's all about Jesus. Can they go there? Can, it's all, he is the truth, the way, and the life. And no one can come to the Father but by Jesus. That has to be the message. It has to be. I don't. We got to build disciples, but first, before we build you, we got to catch you and tell you about Jesus. I ain't trying to tell you about a, a good marriage and how to be good in marriage when you don't have Jesus yet. <laughs> Does that make sense? So sometimes you just got to scale it back. Hold on, foundational. Do you know Jesus yet? Have you said yes to him and his goodness so his favor and Holy Spirit could drop on in you and you could actually have power to walk in this world and overcome sin? <laughs> you can't overcome sin without Jesus. I promise you that. All right? And I know. I, I've been addicted before. I've been in strongholds before. And, and tell, I'll tell you what. It was only by crying out to Jesus and leaning into him that delivered me. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. All right. Another thing is because God wants everyone saved. Somebody say everyone. everyone. We don't get to decide, oh, he's in and he's out because it. No, no, no. You just go and tell, tell the world about Jesus. And let Jesus do the separating on the last day. <laughs> you just go out there. You keep yelling, everybody, Jesus. Right? I, we just say, I speak the name of Jesus. Like, just keep doing that. Jesus, 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 Jesus. You don't get to decide, ah, he's a little off. He didn't make it. I'm the anointed one. No, no, no. <laughs> We're all God's children. We're all, and, and the ones who ain't in his family yet are just lost children. <laughs> Amen. Like, look at the Luke 15, and I'm going somewhere different. Second service is dangerous. Um, we got the prodigal son. We got the lost coin. We got the lost sheep. Like, the lost sheep. We see what matters to God. Lost people. He wouldn't put that in the Bible and say, go after the one if he, did, if he pick and choose. No, go after the one. All right, so here we go. The Bible says God wants everyone to be saved and to know the whole truth. Second Peter, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone come to repentance. That's what my Bible says. Anybody else? I see everyone. I see inclusion. I see people matter. I see. But we get into this, uh, no, they're called, they're not. Who? Huh? So what makes you called? Hold on a second. Let's backtrack. What, what makes you called, though? <laughs> you made it, but he didn't. <laughs> imagine if someone did that, the, the person who shared the good news to me. Imagine if they came across and be like, nah, this dude's scum. <laughs> he, ain't the, he ain't one of the chosen few. Right? We do it. 
I hear it all the time. I hear this debate. I'm just like, you don't decide that. You just preach Jesus. You just go about the streets. You go into all the world and you tell them about Jesus and let Jesus do the work. Okay. I'm just going to, uh, okay, four minutes. Shoot. Um, <laughs> let's look at some things when it comes to sharing our faith. There's some, some exercises and practical steps that we could do. Okay, the Bible says, even though I am free, this is Paul, of the demands and expectations of everyone, I have voluntarily become a servant. I love that. Servant. I've become a servant. A servant. This whole leader thing, this whole, hey, Pastor Paul, I lo- it's cool. I get it. Because there needs to be order in the house and there are gifts and things, but I just want to serve. Ultimately, I'm a servant. I'm a servant. Hey, you're a captain, you're a leader, you're a le- you're a servant. The greatest leaders are the greatest servants. I don't want to have any conversations if, with you if you don't want to be a servant in the house. People be coming to me and, hey, I need to be on your leadership. T- Yo, I don't even know you. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like, people have come and said that. I've never met them in my life. First time visitor, I need to be on your leadership. And then they start to tell me about this whole list of their to-dos and what they've accomplished. I said, my man... Are you willing to help me stack chairs, though? Oh, that turns people off. Oh, that will turn people off. Uh, so, yo, I've never seen Homeboy again. I want to be honest with you. I've never seen him again. <laughs> but I'm going to be honest. If that's the spirit you're bringing to this house is look at me. I need to be. You need to be. <laughs> Paul said, I made myself a servant. And this brother was the most educated, the most smart in all the believers. This brother was on it. And he said, I made myself a servant. <laughs> Yo, to any and all. Here we go. We're going to continue on. To any and all in order to reach a wide range of people, religious, non-religious, meticulous, moralist, loose living, or moralist, the defeated, the, the moralized, whoever, whoever, somebody say with me, whoever. I didn't take on their way of life. I kept my bearings in Christ, but I entered their world and tried to experience things from their point of view. I've become just about every sort of Servant, servant, when I see that too, I didn't have this point before, but just about every sort of servant, like people need different things. When you serve them, not everybody needs the same exact thing. Some need an ear, some need connection, some need, hey, come with me to this event. Hey, some need community, some need prayer, some need, are you willing to make yourself a servant to all? And he said, a, a sort of servant there is in my attempts to lead those I meet into a God-saved life. That's why we serve, is to point them to God. I did all this because of the message. I didn't want to just talk about it. So this is I Love Paul. I wanted to be in on it. Anybody want to be in on this goodness? No, no, for real. Anybody want to be in on it, or you just want to stay on the sidelines? I see you, Marva and Jeff. I met with them yesterday. They're about it. We're in Panera. They started sharing this song with me, and she's just got it bumping. And I'm like, okay, we're going to do this up in Panera. Okay, let me sip my coffee first. (laughs) You know what I mean? I'm like, all right. But for real, I want to be in on it. It's so fun serving the house of God. There's nothing in my life that I want to do outside of this. And the thing about it, before it became my job, I was doing it. That's the thing. Pastor said, yo, you're doing so much for this house. I got to hire you. (laughs) Y'all get it? Like, it wasn't, hey, when I get hired, when? When I do this, I'm going to start using. No, no, no. I was hungry. I was giving my life to this thing before I even stepped on staff. <laughs> Does that make sense? So some of us are waiting for the position when. No, no, no. It's not when. It's now. Okay. So I don't think, and I want to say this, I don't think I've ever seen anybody lead somebody to the Lord by arguing with them. I'm looking all around. Y'all know them people? And if you have led somebody to the Lord by you yelling at them and arguing with them, and put, I want to meet you after just to hear your story because you're probably the first person I've ever heard that by arguing with somebody, you led them to the Lord. I just need, I'm still waiting for that day someone says they did that. And then I'll, I'll be like, oh, okay, interesting. But we must develop a relationship with people. Value people. Value them. Value people. Value people. And then we can add value to people. Paul says, I've made us, I'm a servant, become a servant to any and all, whoever. Right? Whoever, whoever. Margaret in the office who gets you mad every day. 
No, I don't know no Margaret, but for example purposes. <laughs> the person that gets you very, very upset. And this happens all the time. And you want to know something just while we in church. Like the most it happens is within church people. Is when they get mad at other church people. No, I'm serious. Like, in, I think it's one of the greatest, as being in ministry, I think it's one of the greatest attacks from the enemy is to cause division within its own house. Because he knows that if he causes division, this house can't stand. So I walk around and I'm like, you are a leader who can't stand that leader, but y'all run, help me run this whole thing. No, I'm serious. And I get it because I've been there. Because the enemy is, he, he goes around and he knows what he's doing. He's been around and he knows how to play with you. But I thank God for the spirit in this house that is being led by the Holy Spirit. And, 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 and we see the schemes of the enemy. And we won't allow division to be up in here. We're going to have unity. We're going to have love. We're going to have conversations, tough conversations. And we're going to be in unity. Amen? I'll always challenge that. I'll always challenge that. No division in here. Go have the conversation. You're mad at them? Let's go tell them. And you need to listen why they mad at you. Right? Because you got blind spots. And you need to listen. You know, I'm telling you, we could do so much. Christians could do so much if they just say two things. One thing, I don't know. And another one is, I'm sorry. We would cause a lot of solutions if we use them two words, Donald. I don't know. Hey, what about I this, that, and the third? I don't know. <laughs> but we'll figure it out, man. Hey, you really hurt my feelings, bro. Like, that really hurt. Despite how you've been growing up and what you deal with, that hurt me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But people, I'm telling you, we got to do it. We got to do it. We got to do it. So, so I love God because God doesn't change us to accept us, but he accepts us to change us, right? Yes. And as Christians, sometimes we could be so about trying to fix people. I'm going to fix them. I'm going to fix them. I'm going to fix them. That, you're taking on a burden you can't carry. And love will open the ears of people. And, I, and I'm going to continue on real quick. Embrace and hold fast to your faith. That's another point. I didn't, Paul said, I didn't take on their way of life. I kept my bearings in Christ. So it's okay to enter their world, but you don't take on their way of life. Right? I didn't change. And that's what my young people need to hear is that as you continue to grow in your faith with Jesus, you are the light. But when you get in certain groups and circles, you need to know who you are. No, no, I'm, I'm speaking to y'all because I've been there. With the Instagram and the Facebook and, and I need to, I get it, the insecurities and I need to be accepted and loved. Baby, you already loved. You already enough. You already accepted, cared for. You are equipped qualified you are enough you don't got to prove yourself to nobody i want you to walk in confidence i want you to walk and know who you are so when someone suggests something that it's outside of who you are you say nah i know who i am amen so let me say this you don't have to you don't have to be like them to reach them but you got to like them to reach them amen and that's the thing. You don't got to be like them, but you got to like them. You got to love them. How are they, they going to know that we his disciples? By the way we what? Love. By the way we what? Love. Okay. <laughs> it's hard to reach a world that you don't love or know. Too many of us want to curse the darkness rather than turn on the light. I didn't say that in the first service, but I got to say it. Y'all trying to curse something when you call to just turn on the light. Why are you trying to curse something? Be the light. You cursing it and then walking away. No, you, I'm the light. Yo, you know why you struggling? Because you have, you need Jesus. <laughs> but you cursing it and then walking away. No, no, no. You the light, baby. You the salt and light of this world. Stop trying to curse everything. <laughs> you the salt and the light. Be the light. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for your hope. You got to be able to give the reason for your hope. Jesus. Some of us Christians are more upset than anybody else in the world. But you try to point them to someone who's <laughs> full of joy. And I got Jesus. Yo, can we start glaring? Can we start 
walking with some love and confidence and light. The people, can people tell that you're Christian? Or when you're in the workplace, they, they, I say, yo, did you know Johnny goes to church with me? Johnny? Johnny? Yo, Brett, did you hear Johnny went to church, bro? Nah, not jo this Johnny. Yo, you know what Johnny did last week and every, what? Or are people like, yo, Johnny? Yo, that brother is always positive. That brother is always talking about Jesus. That brother... I'm on a basketball team. Real quick, I got this man. I'm on his, in this men's league, over 30 men's league, and I'm meeting with a whole bunch of dudes that ain't believers. They, they talk crazy. They wildin'. But I'm just, like, walking up there. Yo, it's Easter. Y'all coming? Y'all coming? Oh, here comes a po They call me, uh, like, Pope Paul or something. In these text messages, they're like, yo, it's hilarious. And I just go, and I'm like, you got that right, you know? And, and they're just like, but they, they, they like being around me. And that's the thing, like, people wanted to be around Jesus. Do people want to be around you? So they go out to eat, and I'm there, and, and I'm just like, yo, I'm going out with these dudes. Like, I just want to be the light. And they're all wilding, and I'll take a this, that, and third, and they're drinking. And I'm like, I'll take a seltzer with Cran. <laughs> it's funny, right? I said that in the first service, and, and the owner of Miranda's, is uh, she comes to the church, and she's like, hey, come over for a, uh, a seltzer and Cran anytime. <laughs> I'm holding you to it. Donna, we'll go get one after Angel, too. But, no, I'm just there, and, and, and it opens up, and I'm like, hey, friend, hey, my man, like, y'all ever heard about Jesus? Like, wh what's your view on the church? Because that's oft oftentimes where you're going to find out about somebody. What's your church experience like? Because how many know the church can do some damage? <laughs> and unfortunately, we have. Unfortunately, we have. And we push people further away from God and love rather than bring them to it. All right. And then he talks about entering the world to get to understand them and know them. And I want to say this, just a quick point. If you listen longer than most people listen, you'll hear things most people never hear. Listen. Slow to speak. Quick to listen, slow to speak. We do so much talking. Tell me about your life. Go. People love to talk about themselves, too. They really do. They do. You, you just keep asking questions, it'll just keep on going. Just get good at asking questions, and you'll, you'll gain a lot of relationships, I promise you. I've just learned how to ask questions. So tell me about that. Oh, yeah, tell me about that, too. Tell me, don't go into that. Go, go. Details, details. But Jesus connected with the people. And I love this one, 101 principle. Find the 1% that's common ground and go 100% in that area. Rather than going, here's 1% of what we disagree on, and I'm going 100% in that area. Oh, that's going to get them. No, I'm just telling you what I've seen work and what does not work. All right, do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. And, and lastly, there was this young boy who was uh, walking along the beach, and there was tons, thousands of starfish, and he's going, and he's picking them up and throwing it into the ocean. And there's just this old grumpy man who's walking up, probably with a cane. It's my illustration, what I see in my head. And he's walking up. Hey, what are you doing? There's thousands of them. What do you think you're going to do? Get them all? You know them people? So negative. What do you think you're doing? And, and, and the kid's throwing them back, and he's like, you know you're not going to get them all, right? And the young kid, he got a little discouraged at first, like, that's probably right. But then he, he bent down another one, and he looked at it, and he threw it back, and he said, but it made a difference in that one. It mattered to that one. Some of us get so into I got to reach them by the masses. Are you willing just to cross the street? <laughs> Are you willing just to, you're rubbing shoulders at your workplace every day with somebody. Can you just buy them a coffee and be like, yo, God loves you, bro. <laughs> no, for real, like I know this may get weird, but God loves you and he loves your family. Find that soft place in, their, in, in, in what they're going through, whether it's a kid or a broken marriage or and go there. Yo, you deal with a lot of pain, huh, bro? Can I pray for you? Because God wants to intervene. He wants to get up in that mix. He really does because he cares. The Bible says, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. Let's take that to God. Come on, you ready? Jesus, we need you. Look at waters. No, you open that for me? Okay. All right. All right. All right. So we're going we're gonna to share our story. We're going to give an invitation. And this is what I want to do right now. Sorry, Jen. I'm over. But here's, um, it's the story of Jesus, y'all. That, that's how we share our faith. That's how we share. 
we walk with confidence and we have the greatest news story ever. If this continued, if we could hit the titles of the Sentinel and Enterprise every week, it would be this. Jesus saves lost ones or something cool like that. But that's the news we take that paper every day. Hey, you know about this dude named Jesus? Read this. Read it. He came for us. This God who created all the world in eternity. He came for you. The amount of thoughts that God has for you. It says in the Bible that all the grains of the, the beaches of sin, he, his thoughts about you outnumber all the grains. That's love, bro. If we were just at Hampton Beach right now and looked down the strip and all those grains, if I just picked up one scoop, how many are in there? Tons. I don't, you can't count. And God says, my thoughts about you <laughs> outnumber all those grains of sin. Yo, you serious? Are you serious? That's crazy. So nonetheless, if you're in here today, he came for you. And he loves you. Simply that and only that. And that's where everything starts. So I simply want to suggest if you haven't said yes to that kind of grace and that kind of love, right? Hey, I want you. You think about me that much. I need somebody like that in my life. And I could go to you all the time, and you could help me in my situations? Who wouldn't want that free gift? Because he wants it bad. But God is so gentle that he's not going to force himself upon you. That's what's so cool about God is he's not forcing it. He's just simply like, I want, he's on the sideline like, hey, just get me up. And we're just like, ah. But no, today you're going to say, yeah, that's for me. So what I want to do, everybody bow your heads just for privacy issues. And, and this is what I want to do. If you've never said yes to Jesus and the free gift of salvation, which says I'm putting my faith and trust in Jesus alone today, which now saves me, puts me in right relationship with God, and now I have eternity in heaven forever and ever and ever. If you've never said that, I want you to go ahead and shoot your hand up for me right now, boldly, without question. Yes, I see the hand. Is there anybody else? Because right now, I'm just going to suggest, and I'm going to say, I believe everybody up in here is saved, because this is an easy gift. Is that, okay, I see the hand over there. Yes, I do. Is there anybody else who says, I want it? I see the hand, I see the hand, and I see the hand. I'm going to wait one more minute. Is there anybody, oh, I see the hand over there. Yes, I love it. Is there anybody else that says, Jesus, I want you, and I want to be yours? All right, let's pray, let's pray collectively. Father... I love you. I need you. Simply put, I put my faith in you, Jesus, in your sacrifice, your death, your burial, in your resurrection. I put all of my belief in that. And I know that's what saves me. That's what puts me in right relationship with God. I believe that today. I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Great job, Paul. If you guys said that prayer for the first time, welcome to the body of Christ, and we're so excited that you're here. Everyone give it up for everyone that just prayed that. We do want to encourage you just to bear with us a few more minutes. We do have our baptism today, but before we get there, if you did say that prayer for the first time, we have a gift for you. Pastor John Seedling, our lead pastor, wrote this book, A Fresh Start with God, with you in mind. We have English and Spanish available or digital copies if you scan the QR code. We want to encourage you to go ahead and press into all that God has for you and all that he's prepared for you. In this, it's about eight chapters. It's an amazing read. And if you're a believer for a long time, go ahead and reread that as a refresher to encourage you to share that love of Christ. With this connection card, <clears throat> excuse me, we'd love for you to fill that out as um, we're taking a few minutes in this next couple time. Right on the back, there's A, B, C, or D. A is that you walked in here as a believer. B is that you've made that fresh start today. C is you're kind of thinking on it, you're praying on what's next for you and kind of that stir might be starting, but you're not necessarily there yet. 
And then D is you're just attending today. We want to know to be able to meet you where you are, to be able to help encourage you onto your next steps. And for those that are ready, we do have baptism today. So what that is, is an outward expression of what's happening on the inside of our hearts. So if you've already signed up, I encourage you to stand. You who are getting baptized are dismissed to go change. There is still time. If the stirring is for you to do that today, you can go do that now. And I'm going to call the ushers down forward to go ahead and walk us through our moment of generosity. So at the Life Church here, we believe that investing generously changes lives. Part of that is this baptism tank, our access conference, all of those things allow us to sow into our community and truly see God's movements in our lives. So thank you for partnering with us. And there's two different ways that you can do that today. We have envelopes that were also on your chairs. You can give in-house or we encourage you to scan the QR code and go ahead and partner with us as a generosity champion. Those are people that have dedicated and sewn into this house. And by that partnership, we can constantly continue to depend on your tithes and offerings to be able to build God's kingdom here. So we're going to pray over that offering real fast. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you're doing today in our hearts. We thank you for each and every life that's been changed, either through a salvation or through this baptism. And we just thank you for the importance of today in so many lives. God, we thank you. We praise you. And it's all for you and your glory that we do this. And it's in your holy name that we pray. Amen. Have fun. I need to slow down. I, need to, I don't need to be having any more fun. I'm over here yelling at everybody. I was all fired up, wasn't I? Anyways, y'all enjoy the message today. I just get fired up, man. All right, so this is what we're going to do. For all those who are getting water baptized, why don't you come on down, right? Why don't we get the people up in the water who are doing the baptisms, right? And guys, if I could ask all of us, if we could, as they go under the water and come up, I would love for us to just yell and scream and rejoice with all those who made a decision. Amen? Can we do that? Is there anybody who wants to get baptized? You haven't yet, but you're like, I'm with it. Come on. We need at least one. We need one, at least. I know there's some something going on in there. Come on. Is it warm? Okay. Everybody who's getting baptized with us. What do we got? Ten today on the list? What do we got? Shayna, ten? Ah, six? Okay. All right, so let's do this. Y'all ready? Miss, we ready, Shayna? Let's bring them in. Let's let's welcome Bonnie Baker to the pool. Let's go. Come on, Bonnie. This is awesome, man. Go into all the world, baptizing them. I love it. Let's go. So Bonnie said, we got little testimonies, little things that they wrote, each of them. And Bonnie said, when I was born, the world had decided who I would be to it. But my Jesus decided before I was born who I was to him. And she wrote, Isaiah 43, 1, he called me by name, I am his. That's so good, Bonnie. Wow. to new life in Christ. Come on. So, so awesome. And next we have Ian. Come on, Ian. Yes, Ian. 
So look at what Ian said. Ian, he said, I want to have my spirit reborn. Come on, a young man say that. What? Come on, Ian. Ian is from Axis. That's one of our Axis students right there, y'all. Come on. Next, we have Raya Jones, right? Let's go. One more step, girlfriend. Come on now. <laughs> She's trying to do a backflip. You seen her? <laughs> She's like, I need this baptism. Backflip. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Listen, listen. She says, I want a fresh start renewal of my relationship with God. Amen. Amen. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Woo. My man, how do you pronounce your name, bro? Keon. That's your Keon. Let's give it up for Keon. Keon says, I want to be strong in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. We have Dinah. Yeah, Dinah! Dinah says, I would like to introduce the new me because I just got married in December. And she said, then I got the gastric sleeve done. So, amen, Dinah. Come on. The new you, girlfriend. Let's go. Ready? He says, I'm getting baptized so I can show my love of God. Yes. We have David. Can we say what's up to David? Yeah, David. David said, it's a calling for me, and I would like the Holy Spirit to change me. Come on. Come on. Yes, sir.
And I believe you guys, you decided today. Yeah. David, you too? Did you decide today? Did you decide today? Or, yes. These guys just decided today. I'm getting water baptized. Enough is enough. Come on. This is John Powers. And he says to start a new life. Yes, yes, and yes. Jesus. And now we have Jacob. Let's give it up for Jacob. Jacob said, I want to start a new life. Amen. Let's give it up for everybody who got water baptized today. What a great day. How about this last call? Last call. Is there anybody else? Come on. Is there any brave warrior who said, I'm doing it? Anybody? Okay. Well, Father, we thank you for a, this day. We thank you for meeting us here in this place. Father, we love the union we get to have with you, the fellowship. We love you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.